Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. This is Cinema Classics. It sure is, boy. And we, what do you got? What do, what do you got for Listen, me? Within the last month, I've seen... You just throw this stuff at me? I do, me. I am. I come I swinging. <laughs> I know that. Right. Oh, I love it. So I'm going to tell you, I've seen some World War movies. Three within the last month. Zookeeper's Wife, uh -huh. France, and Land of Mine. Just uh -huh. three in my head. And I'm saying World War One, World War Two, and we're talking about... Uh, and a couple of them, the aftermath, the romantic aftermath of these wars. So let's this look at some. This is a vast oh subject. Oh, I know. Here you go again. <laughs> Not really narrowing your focus. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Just throwing it up. And I'm, as a professor, you <laughs> should know better than, I do. you know, if I, if I handed you a paper that was called World War II movies, or World War movies. World War movies. Yeah, it's, not it's even, even just, more. Yeah, I know, I know. You well, would send it right back. All right, the okay. one, all right, before I ask you, because I know you'll go on forever, I'm going to tell you what I think more, more recently my favorite of all these war movies that encapsulates both the seriousness and the sense of humor, mm -hmm. because I think that's essential as well. I'm not sure how much humor John Wayne had in The Sands of Iwo Jima. I don't know how much yeah. was there, but I do believe there's humor in a very dark subject in Inglorious Bastards. Yes, I would pose a question to you. Is Inglorious Bastards actually a war movie? Of course it is. Given it's the fantastical element. Ah, of course it is. You're looking for Nazis just the way uh, Al 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 Alanda, Hans Landa. Hans Landa, yeah. Yeah, it was looking for Jews. He's a Jew hunter. Mm -hmm. They're Nazi hunters. Right. And I can't believe there weren't. And so I, and the fantastical element. What are you talking about? The fantasy no, about just the, the bombing, yeah, ki killing the, Hitler. The, right, the, kill, you know, killing Hitler. The re the rewriting of history. Right. There. Now right. I, I understand in the context of that film, it's it's this really incredible. You get this really great feeling. You get that that satisfaction of seeing that guy shot to pieces. <laughs> you know, which obviously did not happen in real life. Uh, yes, it's a World War Two movie. It's a it. You know, it's also uh, Tarantino's homage to uh, cinema history in some ways. All right, so give me give me one that you can think. Okay, of. what uh, Saving Private Ryan? All right. Do you want to just rattle off titles? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't. I don't. What makes you feel that that's one of the top dogs? I think it's it looms large in a lot of people's minds as one of the great World War movies. Yes. Uh, you know, I think a lot of its power rests in that opening scene yes it does uh and some other you know it's it's a great spielberg movie it's not as great it's flawed i think in, in some ways that we don't remember i watched it recently um you know some of the great world war movies i'm stuck on world war ii primarily uh you know more the more powerful ones don't necessarily take place on the battlefield okay uh the best years of our lives which came out in 1946 and won every major award is really about um, these guys coming home and the sort of pressures of reacclimating to a normal life. Uh, it starred Frederick March. I don't know, have you ever seen it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And would it, would it, it reminds me of From Here to Eternity mm -hmm. in the same way that you're talking. We're not always talking battlefield here. Right. We're talking about that interpersonal thing. And, and just to go back for one second to your comment about Private Ryan, we have that recurring again in Hacksaw Ridge, yeah. where the one thing you do remember is Gibson's ability to show the violence and the mayhem of the war. Yeah. Um, so it, it, Ryan may have a little more depth in some ways than mm -hmm. that, but it's, it, it brings up the same thing. I don't think a lot of World War II movies were as concentrated on replicating the... the yeah. They weren't. It was a lot about the camaraderie right, between the right, men. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm thinking of the story of G.I. Joe, which is a great movie. I think Robert Mitchum's first movie, oh. and it's got Burgess <laughs> Meredith as uh, the uh, the journalist Ernie Pyle. Is that right? Oh, right. That's right. Ernie. Was it Ernie Pyle? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's following these this group of soldiers around, and he's you know taking notes, and he 
he's just looking at the way they interact, and that's primarily the thrust of that movie. Of course, bad things happen to those guys. Of course, yes. And then therein lies the, the power, right? Oh, yeah. It's not, it's obviously not a, as violent or as... And the more romantic end, The Great Escape. Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, it romanticizes. Yeah. And there were certainly enough of the movies then. There are so many different variations of the, the war movie. You know, there there's the, the home front movie, the battlefield movie. Right, right. The, the POW movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, one that's really great, I've only seen one time, but I read both the book and the movie, and I'm fascinated by the American history in it, is uh, To Hell and Back. Oh. The Audie one. Murphy Yes. Uh, Audie Murphy is the most decorated yeah. soldier in Several World films. War II. Yeah. And it's just fascinating to me that here's a time when two things that could never happen happened. One is movie stars went to war, like Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Robert right. Taylor, Clark Gable. Yes. You know, uh, and you had a bunch of movie stars come out of the war, Walter Matthau, Don Rickles. Um, ah. and, and then here you got and Audie Murphy, a guy who was a soldier, who became a movie star. He wrote a book, played himself in the movie, yeah. and then went on to play yes, heroes in all great. kinds of movies. Westerns. It's just fascinating. And looking at that big sweep, The Longest Day in 1962. Mm -hmm. And you have a film like that has every star who ever lived. Well, there's a bunch of those. <laughs> I know. You know, and then The Longest Day and... Um, and then there are a bunch of fun ones like uh, Where Eagles Dare oh, right. and Kelly's yeah. Heroes, yeah, both Clint right. Eastwood movies. Right, right. Uh, the, the Adventure, right. you know, Dirty Dozen. Oh, yeah. And then the uh, other end, Schindler's List. Oh, yeah. You, right. know, you just take, just take exactly. the, the dark end. So mm -hmm. your thesis is. Now you've opened up a whole. Oh, yes. uh, another avenue, yeah. the, the Holocaust yeah. film. Uh, and great. Uh, other World War One. you have. Paths of Glory. Paths of Glory. I love that movie. <laughs> Kubrick, Kirk Douglas. It's one of my favorite Kubrick movies. 57, yeah. That's, Man. Uh, and it's got one of the great scenes of a guy uh, reprimanding authority okay. ever. You know, because yeah. Kirk Douglas is essentially, they give him this, uh, they give him this uh, mission, and he knows it's a suicide mission, and he's, you know, basically fighting the decision all the way. And then, of course, it turns out horrifyingly. And some of our audience will remember uh, the Grand Illusion, 1937. Oh, a little fancy. Yeah, that's a, that is that's a, a world war. French, <laughs> Get very Jean nice. Renoir. <laughs> oh, good look at you, you. high you. And then there are others in our audience, uh, perhaps more conservative, who would have loved Patton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, I, we've got uh, well. Too many. End, I know you have too many. barely named one <laughs> World War One movie. This was your topic. How about I got another one? I just named two or three. Here's another one. King what of Hearts. King of Hearts. I have never never seen that one. Okay, yeah. What's the one, one uh, that uh, I think it's World <laughs> War One? The one uh, Spielberg made about the horse. Oh yeah. What was that? Yeah. War Horse. Right. Okay. All right. Good for Obvious you. title. I couldn't think of. Yeah. Um, well, all right. I'm going to stop right now because you've accused me of having no World War One, and I can remember a half dozen that I spelled. But that's typical because you're not going to listen to me because you had your whole list. In the, in the, in the end, I don't. I doubt if we'll. In the end, the lesson, John, is narrow the topic. We only have five minutes. I'm sure you're going to hear how, like, it's just going to be. Thick, 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 thick. And the point is, there are certainly a variety of films about both World War I and World War II, and it's continuing on because I opened up with three films recently came out. Our next topic, relationships. 